Hi everyone. I'm Ashutosh. And I was compelled to make this short video. It's a simple reply. There's no argument, there's no debate, there's no altercation. It's not even a knee jerk reaction from the community of UPSC aspirants, or for that matter, the mentors, the teachers, or the so called coachings. This review, or for that matter, a short, very short introduction to the understanding of civil services stems from the fact that I have been an aspirant, invested five years, and then a teacher by profession being an engineer, half lawyer, or researcher, or whatever. But the things that I learned, the things that became more fruitful, meaningful to me was the time spent in civil services preparation. And yes, no doubt, the core of the issue remains the same, that why to waste the youthful time, the youthful energy in this preparation. <clears throat> in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, the drama, quite popular, made into numerous movies, the famous lines of the dictator Julius or Julius Caesar, et tu brute, you too Brutus, Tumbi, and you also Brutus, many things could be implied were the words by the dictator Julius Caesar for his friend Brutus whom he felt was his closest aide and he was the one involved in his assassination. Why this phrase here? Because this adequately represents the mindset of the people in the government itself and why they are the ones who are assassinating the government itself. <clears throat> the government, as we all know, is a system that runs a society or to an extent serves the society. It should serve the society. So my thoughts or my contention regarding this statement, the India's UPSC dream reflects poverty of aspiration. Probably I do not agree to this idea. If that was so, the constitution makers would have deleted the service altogether from the constitution. It would not have found the place in the esteemed constitution. <clears throat> part 14, part 14A of the constitution deals with civil services. Articles 309 or 308 to roughly 323-24 deals with civil services. UPSC, State Public Service Commissions and likewise. What was the intent of the constitution makers? What was the intent of the statesmen of that time to continue with this exam? with this repression. One of the main, main arguments was that the transition from a colonial system to a democratic system requires a vehicle of transformation, or at least a vehicle of transition, if not transformation. This vehicle of transition was obviously inherent in the colonial culture, the colonial value system, and still, we opted for it. Though Nehru was not himself very appreciative of it. But yes, Sadar Patel, a Home Minister, was quite confident of having the civil services as the binding force, the glue between the transition from colonial to the contemporary India. And this is where the answer to this statement comes. The aspiration or poverty of aspiration is a term which obviously reflects that the best of the best minds of this country are dreaming too low, are aiming too less, are 
having a mediocre approach towards life and achievement, which is not totally true and which cannot be accepted at any cost, not coming from a member of this community, right? Not obviously as a commercial coaching, nothing like that. This debate, this discussion is purely academic. It's, it's purely rational in nature. So obviously I appreciate uh, Mr. Sanjeev's views coming from one of the highest you know, staff bodies of the government, the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council, that obviously indicates that he's at the hem of the policy making. He's one of the key stones of the public policy making in this country. Obviously, he will realize that public policy making is a complex phenomena and it does not emerge merely from a particular quantitative understanding of the problems of this society. When disaster struck, when the, the, the uh, conflicts emerge, when communalism takes place, when the roads need to be created to reach the remotest hamlets of this country, or when a bureaucrat builds a road by himself, or when a bureaucrat becomes popular as people's officer, or when a civil servant right, uh, declares his assets being one of the first acts of transparency in this country. Right? We cannot denounce the aspiration of people towards such extraordinary acts by ordinary human beings. So in that sense, the UPSC, the preparation for this exam, does not stem merely from the idea that it is a simple job, an employment, which will guarantee right, a survival package. That is what, not what an average youth lives on. That is not what an average youth aspires for. He aspires for greater achievements. So if a country has not been able to create an alternative to civil services, if the government has not been able to demarcate the trajectory, the path of the success of the normal youth, the educated youth, or if a country does not provide any premium for being highly educated and for being ambitious enough to look for the positions of power in the system through which they can bring social transformation, then whose fault is that? Is it the fault of the youth? Does that youth which is aspiring from a lower middle class, from a middle class to enter or mobilize himself into that level where he means something, not just a number on the population dashboard. Okay, that aspiration cannot be just qualified as a desperation or a poverty of aspiration. <clears throat> that aspiration is what leads them to develop a competitive mindset, to hone their skills, life skills, when you prepare for this exam. True that this exam is mother of all exams and probably that is how it or that is the kind of mammoth you know, obstacle it creates in the path of the youth. But then the greater the aim, the greater the ambition, the greater is the effort. And why not? Why not aspire to excel? Why not aspire or think of UPSC as a mechanism for funneling the government with the best brains and best minds? Why not a country needs to be, or a country deserves to be run by the most intelligent, by the most competitive, by the most hardworking, probably most sincere, and probably the most uh, sensitive people of this country. If the exam or this nature of entry to the civil service is not there, the youth loses hope. It doesn't have a social identity. He merely becomes a cog in the wheel. He merely becomes a job seeker, not an aspirant. And if, obviously, the economic turnaround is not there, if economic transformation is not there, if the economy does not have the elasticity to absorb such a manpower, what else is the option? So in that sense, I would say that the competitive exams like UPSC, they nurture 
दे नर्चर द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ क्रिएटिविटी दे नर्चर द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी एफर्ट दे नर्चर द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ क्रिएटिंग दोज पीपल राइट हु हैव समवेयर इन ग्रेंड पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट विद इन दम the corporate culture the corporatism as the new public management model as supported by uh, honorable mr sanjeev the new public management model has been quite successful in the west and probably has been more or less borrowed in the east as well but economic recessions the global slowdown of economy the large number of youth misguided into uh, what you can say various kind of commercial activities in europe in usa right the the office of opium the office of personnel and management in us is the highest body which deals with the civil services with the public servants right its latest data says 21.9 million civil servants were absorbed by the usa which is a capitalist country obviously on the flip side of that india being a democratic socialist country obviously it has a specific welfare a, a kind of socialism i would not say totally ideal socialism but yes a kind of socialistic agenda it has and obviously the main driver of this transformation is the administration looking at the scenario of diversity regional territorial linguistic communal ethnic right these diversities cannot be tackled by corporates yes i do agree that yes if there are corporates with a meaningful employment with meaningful constructive contribution to shaping the youths uh various endeavors or shaping the youths ambitions that would be really good but in that scenario you cannot downgrade the civil services or the 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 overall idea of upsc it has stood the test of time it has provided us with the best of the best brains it has given the stability to governance of this country so i would say the desire for upsc right is uh not the poverty of aspiration or the upsc as a system is not the poverty for aspiration it's the puberty of aspiration this is where it nurtures the boys into the men the teens into the adult where obviously the civic sense the morality social morality political morality and various other kinds of ingredients get fulfilled into the lives of these people the society gets a constructive meaning through such people through such aspirants who such uh, students who obviously nurture into this particular arena no doubt there has to be reforms the reforms are quite overdue but these reforms right or the diversion of these reforms cannot be in the name of demoralizing the aspirants from appearing for this exam in that way right a major part of politics is boring where the youth from 22 years to almost 50 years puts his life into the politics and somewhere even after that he doesn't get a ticket he doesn't get an entry into the politics thanks to the dynastic politics thanks to the elitism thanks to the powerful lobbies which are managing the political parties in india in that scenario a researcher right obviously who's not working for a nobel prize but yes he puts his entire life skills into getting a nobel prize somewhere in 60s and 70s in that sense the doctors who invest their years and years of effort and education right into becoming specialists by the age of 35 or 40 they are also doing something useless so this idea that youth need not you know get into the upsc because of its drudgery because of its monotony because of its you know a boring nature that's totally not acceptable that's totally absurd everything in life right becomes or comes to that scenario but yes i daily or do agree that the reforms are needed the reforms which have been suggested by second rc quota committee alag committee 
whatever committees are there. They have suggested for reforms. Plus, there can be a number of other reforms, which I really appeal to because this is just a reply. It's not, I said in the beginning itself, it's not a debate. I, I hope he listens to us. So <clears throat> the reforms needed or should be done, which are necessary. Yes, integrate most of the exams at the central government level through the UPSC CSC. I know there are a lot of specialist exams, right? But yes, you can have an additional paper for that. So everybody who is appearing should appear for a centralized exam. People who qualify for limbs or mains or give interview should be kept in a hierarchical order in terms of their utility for different jobs in the government. A lot of people like us, like me, thousands of people over the period of time who have given interviews and who are highly qualified people who have put in a lot of hard work, who have obviously invested their lifetime of youth. What do they get in the end? Not that drawback of this exam or that consequence of this exam is an onus, is a responsibility of the government, not of the aspirant. So one who gives the interview must have an available job or an available role, right, with the government. The government has numerous administrative, technical, right, rural development, agriculture, infrastructure, various areas where it can absorb these people. These people have domain competency, as Second ARC has already talked about. They are engineers, doctors, humanities graduates, science graduates, postgraduates, PhDs, right, and whatnot, IAMs, MBAs. So these people have their core competency, absorb them. Give them a card, give them a certificate, which entitles them not to appear at various other exams once they have given the IS interview or written the mains. Why not tie up with corporates? As part of the CSR initiative, these are the people, right, who can work with the corporates. Develop their social skills, develop their social development skills, develop their, you know, uh, or somewhere nurture or use the immense knowledge they have acquired and put that into practice. Also, right, government can create several verticals within this exam itself through which people can opt for various services. And obviously, they should not keep trying for services again and again. They should already highlight their preference. As per the vertical, right, you can add an additional paper or you can tweak the questions in the exam as per that. This will be a little more effort by the government, right, but it will uh, very credibly utilize the resource, the knowledge of the aspirants. Redu reduce the age, reduce the attempts. Right? So it is quite obvious that we can, right? It is quite obvious that we can uh, make these transformations and not necessarily put that burden on the aspirant. We all come from middle class or low middle class and our aspirations obviously are of mobilizing right our statuses or for that matter you know at least increasing the so-called identity of our families societies communities and this is how traditionally the indian society has evolved so a radical transformation a radical departure from the existing system just on the premise that we may now be following the new public management model, we may not be for now be following the, the Western model of economic development, or for that matter, I would not say totally a neoliberal, but a new conservative model of development. And as, as uh, dear sir, as you are part of the government, obviously you know that how complex the public policy making is, and this is where the role of the bureaucracy comes. This is where the aspiration of a common youth of excellence, of materializing his education, of putting his entire life's effort comes into picture. It becomes an instrumental part of the governance and policy changes in this country. And after overall, it is the hope which drives people to excel. So my request would be not to take that hope away not to demoralize the candidates, so many of them are working hard. Yes, if you want, definitely go for transformational shift into it, right? Look for, obviously, the good people who can nurture these students and aspirants for this exam, rather than just you know, looking at the viral videos of motivators or teachers, right, who are in millions. But there are a lot of teachers, a lot of educators who are working very hard 
who are who are who are probably improving upon the level of education and knowledge these aspirants have taken away from the universities and the educational institutions so that would be my humble reply and no doubt as socrates said that a democracy evolves a democracy develops right around the education that surrounds it so no doubt right, this exam gives an opportunity this exam gives a funneling system to the civic etiquette the civic morality and the civic living that a democracy requires so bring the technical changes bring the fundamental changes but in no way you can deny the hope to the youth of this country right of mobilizing of increasing their status in in terms of you know putting their effort into something which transforms their lives their families their communities and obviously overall the society so thank you so much there is no debate there is no discussion there is no i would say a uh, befitting reply it's simply a humble reply which i felt we need to talk about right if given a chance definitely we'll talk about it maybe physically or directly in case right the government wants to talk to the people who really want to bring changes rather than just talking to people who are sitting in the armchairs and trying to transform the society through an armchair approach or a blueprint model thank you so much all of you hope my discussion my uh this interaction doesn't offend any one of you right we are uh thankful to all of you for listening to us right do tune in tune into us for other things right over a period of time right we might come up with a lot of data and facts like uh i was uh, i didn't put that data into perspective that government after 70 years has brought a uh, uh, reservation in politics for women right at the state and the uh, parliamentary level 70 years 33% 33 one by 3% right whereas bureaucracy in 2006 the participation of women was 20% in 2020 it was around 20 uh 6 27% and in 2023 it is 34% yes it's a it's a big contribution by upsc it's a good uh achievement of the government no doubt and at the same time it is the bureaucracy which is becoming it is the upsc which is becoming the torch bearer for gender empowerment and gender transformation hope the politics would be doing the same thank you so much all of you have a great time see you there